Right, welcome back to another video and today I finally took the Asus P5Q T Turbo apart to look onto uh, to look at the VRAM and um, all the other stuff that's under a heatsink on this board. So um, I guess the most interesting part is the VCore VRAM and yeah that is actually kind of still weird because all those MOSFETs Every single one of them, right up here and then right there, these are all the same. Normally what you would see is you have um, like one high side and then two different MOSFETs which are the low sides. On this motherboard all of them are the same and all of these MOSFETs are Renesas RJK 0355 DPAs, as far as I can tell. The actual package says, I don't know, you should be able to see it, it just says uh, K0355, and the data sheet that I'm reading from is the one that I found after putting that into Google. So, um, these MOSFETs, they have... 8.2 milliohms of RDS on at 10 volts gate to source voltage, which is not that bad for high side. For low side, it is really, really bad. 8.2 milliohms, that's, that's literally worse than the four phase that I have in my home server with the locked i5. Um, so yeah, and then the drain current, the continuous drain current, is 30 amps and then the peak drain current is 120 amps. Considering how cool these VRM heat sinks were, especially considering the high audios on of these, I don't think that we are pulling this much current from this. Uh, actually, this is not the Q9450. Q9450 is right over here. This is the Pentium D that um, I deleted. So now my heat spreader and as you can see by all the empty capacitor pads um, yeah it's it doesn't work anymore I damaged all these capacitors and uh, I guess you can get it back to working when you put those back on but yeah I still also just have the Q9450 which works fine so, um, so that's for the VRM. We have 30 amps and we have two low sides and one phase. So per phase we have 60 amps. That's, yeah, that's actually fine. Like eight phases of 60 amps. That's completely fine. Um, the RDS on also halves because they are in parallel. So instead of, what was it, 8.2, we have 4.1 audio, uh, milliohms audios on that's still pretty bad but that's now about as good as the uh, four phase in my home server system um yeah and then i already said this in the other video our pwm controllers over here that is a uh, asp 0800 um yeah and that's how i know that this is an eight phase because it has eight phase uh, operation in the datasheet. And I'm actually gonna have to look the datasheet up one more time. Is it this one? Uh, no, this is not it. Wow, where did I find that data sheet? Uh, that is. Okay, we have the ASP0800. And now we wait for my internet to load it. So, selectable one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight phase operation up to one megahertz per phase. That's this bit there. We have our switching frequency. Um, program, programmable 0 0.375 volts to 1.6 volts output. 
supports VR11 and VR11.1 specification. And that's pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. So, 8 phase up to 1 megahertz. Um, that's probably not what it's running actually. Let's say anywhere. It does it have a typical switching frequency table anywhere? Mm, doesn't look like it. Yeah. Also, don't wanna wanna uh, hang on this for too long. So yeah. It's switching frequency is not that important. Like this CPU does not pull that much power, as we've seen where with the Intel stock cooler, it's completely fine. Uh, on a today's CPU, that would be instant heat death, basically. And that's also why I like the VRAM. It is an eight phase, which is pretty good. Um, that's more phases than my Ryzen system actually has. That's a six phase V core plus a four phase SOC, but um, what would be the SOC uh, VRAM on the Ryzen 1 is right here, the Northbridge VRAM. Um, that also has the same MOSFETs, same for the, what I guess is a two phase memory, at least there are two physical phases. That's probably the PWM controller for it, that looks like a two phase one. So yeah, uh, same MOSFETs as it is with the, uh, with the Northbridge. And yeah, um, like I, I think the, the VRAM is not that bad. I, I think it's okay-ish. The RDS on is absolutely, like that's way too much, but considering that the CPU is not pulling that much power and that we have two low sides in parallel and it's eight phases and yeah, it's probably okay. So the VRM on this, not that big of a deal. I would think it could become a problem once you do really, really extreme overclocking on this. But with the dead memory channels on this, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not gonna bother with it. As, as I've said in the other video, um, I, try, I, I would try to do with this board what I can and then I just try to get rid of it. I don't want it, so. That's it. So um, then, speaking of the North Bridge, here we have the North Bridge without the heat sink, with the one phase uh, DRM for it. And one thing, this uh, right here, it actually says P45. On the website, I think it said P45 chipset, but like that's the North Bridge, that's your memory controller, the chipset is down here. At least I would say that's the chipset, and that's obviously not a P45. It says they're nowhere. So, yeah, um, I'm kind of confused. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is the North Bridge. I'm not so sure if this is what you would call a chipset today. That This might do some stuff that you would have in your chipset today. So, yeah. And... Um, that's pretty much it for what's on the board. I mean, it's pretty easy if you have just one MOSFET for everything. Um, so now I can talk about the heat sinks because I also have something to say about it. So first chipset heat sink. Yeah, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, probably doesn't put out that much heat, which is why it's like this. Um, what I have to, like, one thing that I want to address is uh, the North Bridge heatsink. So, uh, I took the thermal paste off of this, and what I found is there was a sticker. Like, half of the contact uh, surface with the North Bridge was obstructed by a sticker. You can still see the remnants of it right here. Why is there a sticker in there? And the thermal paste looked really, really bad. Um, yeah, so why? 
I don't know. I don't know if it was like that. I mean, this thermal paste right there kind of looks like someone tried to replace it. I don't know. One thing that I will complain about, though, is right this. This right here. This is the VRAM of uh, heat sinks. Um, I think it's already clear that like these are better than some of the heat sinks you get today, but these are still not substantial. They remained kind of cold because like, yeah, this is an eight phase on a CPU that doesn't pull that much power, but I've seen better heat sinks than this on this generation of boards. Um, one, the thing that I'm going to complain about though, apart from the plastic pin things that they used to attach, which are a pain to get out, um, are this. Uh, you can see, not only do you have uneven pressure from uh, what you can see, like some of the indents are not as clearly, uh, not as clear to see as, um, as the other ones. Um, this thing also has the same is issue as the Dark Zero 2 GTX 580. You see right here? It doesn't cover the entire MOSFET. And I'm pretty sure these are the stock MOSFET. Uh, Thermal pads, because there was these were dusty, these were not replaced. Asus, why? <sighs> like I get that a lot of heat also gets dissipated through the board, but why? Why do you have the heat sinks not contact the, the entire mod? And then it's even the low sides, like. The low sides MOSFETs, those those handle more current, those get hotter. And it's an it's another one of these ASUS things. And it's just like Why? You could have done better. You should have done better. Like I don't see stuff like this with MSI and Gigabyte. Oh, okay, MSI kinda did it with the RX 5700 XTs. So they too are guilty of this, but on Gigabyte, I've never seen this. Why? Why ASUS? So, yeah. Those are the heat sinks, and yeah, I mean, this board is pretty straightforward. You have you have your eight phases V-Core, only K0355s, 8.2 milliohms RDS on, that's really bad. 30 amps uh, continuous drain current, that's fine. Like you can get boards for AM4 with uh, 30 amp smart power stages. And those are not always even a six phase, I think, uh, an eight phase, I think those could come as a six phase. I'm not so sure though. So I guess in terms of components, the VRAM is fine. If you would buy a motherboard today, you would get a lot, a much better VRAM. Um, but the phase count of this VRAM kind of saves it. So the fact that it's an eight phase, it, that's kind of saving it. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Like I don't have anything more to say really. Um, that's this motherboard right here. And yeah, so now one more thing that I could talk about is the capacitors. So. You do have your input and output filtering. Um, so for the output filtering, this motherboard uses six 560 microfarad 2.5 volts capacitors, the 5K, I think that means these are 5,000 hours rated, which, uh, I mean, if I look at my 8700K right there uh, on my Z370 Eros Gaming 5, that kind of has a lot of more capacitors and now I'm actually gonna have to look what capacity these are. Oh man, I really can't see. Uh, okay, let's let's take a look at the AM4 system then. <laughs> so these are also 560 microfarads, but 6.3 volts on the Z3, uh, on the X370 Gaming K7. Um, so in terms of capacity, this is pretty low compared to what you get today, um, because. The K7 is not using six of those, it's probably using 12 to 15. Or, well, actually, there are none of the on the SOC one. Okay, the, um, it's 
Okay, it might be 8 to 10 then. So, yeah, the output filtering is not that good. And then your input filtering, you have a 270 microfarad 16 volt right here, two more right here, another one here. And yeah. So, capacitor LED is also not that impressive. But the thing is, I have no reference of what you would usually get for your capacitor layout back then on these boards. Since the only references I have are two OEM motherboards that can't even overclock, so those are probably the very, very, very least you can do. Um, compared to today's motherboard, the capacity is very, very low actually. And yeah, so that's kind of the last thing. Um, I would find interesting in talking about this. This is a pretty short video, actually. And I really don't want to make it longer. So, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this VRM overview, as I'm not gonna call these. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until we see each other next time, goodbye.